Now let's talk about a vertical shrink versus a vertical stretch. So first off, let's make sure it's a vertical transformation. So maybe we have f of x is equal to 2 times x squared. So only the x is being squared. So I do know that this is a vertical transformation. It happens after the square function. Now I have to decide how is this going to change things? Well, with vertical transformations, I tend to find it a little easier, partly because we know that p of x and x squared are the same thing. So whatever this output is, I'm just going to multiply it by 2. Well, great. That actually makes it really easy to calculate this. So no matter what I plug in, let's say I plugged in an f of 1, for example, I'm going to take that output and just multiply it by whatever the p of 1 value is, which I already have in my table over here. So 0 times 2 is just 0. 1 times 2 is just 2. 4 times 2 is just 8, and so on and so forth. Now let's put them on the graph and get an idea of how this looks different. Now, this is where I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, what's the difference between a vertical stretch and shrink and a horizontal? Because they do the same thing, right? If we had something like this, they both make the graph skinnier, right? It goes up faster. But the difference here is that what's really happening in this case is we're kind of going through our inputs faster, right? That's why it's a horizontal change. However, here, we're taking whatever the normal output would be and we're doubling it and in this case we're kind of taking it and stretching it in the vertical direction so this would be a vertical stretch times two so all of our vertical values or all of our y values are going to end up being multiplied by two well just like in the other case it works the other way as well we can slow things down so let's look at a function maybe g of x which is equal to let's say um one half of x squared notice i didn't put the parentheses this time i didn't do that on purpose remember order of operations say that we have to square the x before we do anything else so the parentheses are actually unnecessary so this is definitely still a vertical change okay but what's going to happen in this case is we know that the x squared is just p of x. So whatever our normal output would be, we're just going to multiply that by 1 half. So in this case, with g of x, if our normal output was at 1, our new output is going to be at 1 half. If our normal output was at 4, we're going to be down here at 2. If our normal output was at um, what? 9, then we're going to be down here at 4.5. And, and same thing over here. And what we would say in this case is that our graph is in fact going up at half the speed it normally would. Or in other words, it's being vertically shrunk. Now, hopefully you can identify if something is being vertically or horizontally shrunk or stretched.